Now, do you think you can tell the difference between film and digital? I don't know, can you? Did you see that coming? You probably did, that's fine. Okay, so can you tell the difference between these two images? Obviously, yes. Um, can you tell which one is film? Maybe, but not for sure. Uh, I ran a little test on Instagram with a few sets of images. I'm gonna show you the sets right now. Pick in your head which ones you think are film. Okay, now that you've got it, maybe you need a little bit more time. Okay, now that you've got it, here are the answers. Comment below how many you got right, how many you got wrong, if you think it was easy or hard. I have been messing with converting digital images over to look like film for as long as I can remember taking pictures because I like the film look, the spice. It's so much better in my opinion, even if you're shooting digital and trying to emulate it. And I feel the same way about video. And I've been using this software Dehancer for my video for a long time to make it look more like film, but they just made a Lightroom plugin. And that's what I used on those images before. So I wanna talk about what it can do, what I've been using it for, and if you can really like match film photos or not. All right, guys, we're jumping into Lightroom. We're going to go over a couple of things I found uh, Dehancer to be pretty useful at. Uh, first off, I am going to attempt to match uh, a photo for you guys. Uh, we have a shot from Hawaii uh, with Cinestill 800T and a digital shot of the same waterfall, same time, same day. First things first, I like to match them in Lightroom as far as exposure and temperature, like white balance. It just helps the film stock uh, that's already on Dehancer uh, work better. All right, so what I like to do is keep our reference photo in the background, and they have a ton of different film stocks uh, preloaded on, and I am just going to pull um, Cinestill 800, because I know that's the film stock I used before. And already you can tell there's a big difference as far as the colors. Uh, so they have a slider right here where you can push and pull the exposure if you know what you've already uh, done with it or developed. Uh, there's a bunch of tools. I'll just go over them as I use them if it comes up. So I'm gonna start by actually adding halation because I noticed that uh, affects the uh, coloring quite a bit. Uh, Cinestill 800T is wild uh, with its halation, so you always gotta turn it up quite a bit. Uh, let's throw in film gram right now, why not? I like to try and match the size. That's looking good. I like how the grain dynamically adjusts and you can turn it up like specifically in the shadows uh, or even the highlights and stuff like that, which is really cool. We've got deeper shadows in the film photo, so I'm gonna try to try to match that. I think that's pretty close. I'm gonna hit okay and then I'm gonna adjust the green hue uh, in Lightroom. So let's do that. So when you hit okay, it automatically brings it over into Lightroom. Uh, we're gonna just develop it a little bit more. Let's bring our reference in. Uh, so I would say the main difference is our greens are much bluer and they're much more saturated and we still need to dehaze this. So I'm gonna add some extra dehaze and then I'm gonna go into the hue and I'm gonna tilt our greens more blue. Yeah, I'm liking how that looks. Cool, guys. So you can see what we have here um, over on this side. This is what we've done. This is where we started. Quite a big difference, and it is matching our actual film photo way more. All right, next up, I have another use case for Dehancer. This is a finished photo retouched and everything. This is just me wanting to add a little bit of spice on top of the image. So this is like probably the least faithful to like real film stock as far as what you can do with your photo because we've already edited the colors, we've already edited a bunch of stuff. Um, but this is what I'm probably gonna use this software for the most. 
um, it's just finding some some extra pizzazz, putting some extra sparkle on the image. Okay, I'm liking the uh, Portra 160 VC. Let's see it without and with. Yeah, just a little bit more dramatic. I like that uh, the extra like purple hue in the background and stuff. Uh, let's go in and fine tune this. Throw on that film grain. Always put too much film grain. That's the uh, that's the key. Uh, let's see what halation does. Don't mind a little bit of halation. Oh, I like how that bloom looks a lot. It's just cool to have all these extra features that Lightroom really just doesn't have. That's about all I want to do with it, but let's look at before and after. Yeah, that changes it up quite a bit. Adds a little bit of that uh, dynamic like softness and stuff like that that you get from that film grain that is reactive uh, and halation and bloom, all that stuff looks great. And then I'm gonna just show one more. We're gonna do this guy. Um, this is Jacob, we did a photo shoot, these haven't come out yet. I want to do this in black and white, and I want to really test out their black and white film stocks. First, I'm going to up the exposure just a bit here. I think that works perfect. Sorry about my uh, voice kind of being a little messed up. I got the Omnicrons. I really like the, uh, what is that even? Um, the Type 42 Exp. 1991. I have no idea what this is. Uh, it looks great though, so I'm gonna use it. We're gonna find our black point that works perfect. I really wanna exaggerate the contrast in this. Turn down our tonal contrast. Uh, definitely add our foam grain. Turn it up too much. <laughs> halation. Is it gonna do red halation? No, it keeps it black and white. Okay, that makes sense. That's cool. So in a black and white photo, you can tell that whatever they're running to find where halation goes is different than wherever their bloom actually goes. Uh, I'm gonna use some bloom. I do, I do really like that on the hair because I was a little bit distracted in this photo by the detail in the hair. I like the bloom. We're gonna turn down save lights so that we have less, even less detail in that hair. He's really getting hit by that god ray, you know? love that we're gonna add the vignette uh just barely yeah wow i like that a lot this is before this is after killer dude killer i love that for black and white i'm gonna use this for like pretty much every black and white did i not go over any of the features in the software you can favorite film stocks uh it looks like they're going to be coming out with more film stocks uh because there's a built-in thing to update the uh, film profiles i mean that's about it guys this is what i've been using it for it's it's pretty cool software uh I'm gonna save this real quick before I do the outro. So yeah, guys, that's a Dehancer photo. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, again, let me know about uh, those comparison photos I showed you guys in the beginning, uh, if they were too easy or what. Those are all the things that I use the software for. I'm not, it's not an affiliate link or anything. I'm not sponsored by them. They, uh, they gave me the software to test. Yeah, check it out if you want. It's uh, Dehancer. If you Google that, you'll find him. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching and uh, bye forever.